this is Calimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. So, the topic of today's video is a pretty popular web animated show, Hell of a Boss. In case you haven't heard about this show, Hell of a Boss was created by Vivzi Pop, or Vivian Madrano, well-known animator on YouTube who has a very distinct and striking art style. Hell of a Boss is a show about a company of eccentric contract killers from Vibzy's version of Hell that can travel to the living world and put hits on people who are still alive. Though, if I'm being completely honest, it's really been a while since the show has been about that. Hell of a Boss is actually a spin-off of her main series Has Been Hotel that will be airing on A24. I highly recommend you guys check it out because beyond all the drama and grievances, it is an incredible work of animation, especially from a team of independent artists. And that's not to say the work is perfect either, but it's still pretty dang impressive. As a bit of context, I've personally been a huge fan of Vivzi since her thesis film Timber was posted on YouTube. I was absolutely blown away by the colors and the expressiveness and distinctness of the characters, and her art was one of the main reasons I became so interested in character design in the first place. I am a Vivzi stan, okay? Or I used to be. I kind of fell off after the first two or three episodes of Hell of a Boss aired and it was mostly because of real life stuff and me being more interested in other things. But I am aware that Vivzi hasn't exactly had a good track record these past few years. I hear she's not really the best at taking criticism, so hopefully she won't be too mad at this video. <laughs> Because as you might have seen from the title and thumbnail, we will be talking about Vivzi's controversial Beelzebub design. Now, if you came to this video because you think it's gonna be a rant video or a Vivzi pop hate video, you're free to click off because it's really not. As I've mentioned before, I'm a fan of Vivzi, and to get it out of the way now, I don't think Beelzebub's appearance is bad character design at all. I actually really like how Beelzebub looks. It's giving early 2010s DeviantArt Sparkle Dog OC, and I love that. But it just doesn't read as Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, and the King of Gluttony. Nor does it match the theme that Vivzi herself has decided for the Gluttony Ring. Don't get me wrong, I know what she was trying to do, and I think she had some genuinely clever ideas. But she didn't commit to it as much as I think she could have. Um, I definitely think it was a case of trying to do too much at the same time. So in this video, I will talk about the tricks and techniques I use when following a theme and how to create strong, coherent character designs. And I'll talk about why Vivzi's Beelzebub design is so polarizing and how I would redesign the character to address some of my personal gripes with it. But before I get into that, I would like to add another disclaimer that you don't have to follow these rules or techniques at all when making a character design either. And just because you don't follow these rules that I use doesn't mean your character design is automatically bad. At the end of the day, the most important thing in designing characters is doing what makes you happy, especially if you're just doing it for fun. And if a character design makes you happy, then that's all that matters. Which is why I think it's important to acknowledge that Beelzebub's design is clearly Vivzi's own self-indulgence and a culmination of all the things she likes based off of her portfolio. Because as a longtime fan, Bee's design is quintessentially Vivzi pop. The bright colors, the big emo hair, the clothes that came straight out of Hot Topic, and yes, the furry design. If you only know Vivzi from Hell of a Boss or Has Been Hotel, you might not know that most of her work has mostly been based in anthropomorphic characters, and in my personal opinion, that's where her style comes through the strongest. You can see this in Stolas' design and all her Hellhound characters, and even all the way back in Timber. Because long before any of those projects, Vivzi had a webcomic called Zoophobia, which was really her first venture into animation on YouTube and how she initially gained her audience. As the name suggests, the story revolves around a cast of anthropomorphic characters alongside a human cast. 
Vivzi made lots of music-related content with these characters, including animated music videos. Which leads us to Vivzi Pop's extremely successful Die Young animation. It got so big that it landed her in legal issue with Kesha's lawyer, which unfortunately means that the video is no longer up. However, all the OG fans know that Beelzebub was 100% based on JJ, if not JJ herself in the afterlife. And it all comes full circle with the fact that Kesha voices Beelzebub in the episode. To me, it's just the perfect resolution to the lore. Although, there is definitely an argument to be made that having Kesha voice the Lord of Gluttony and Overindulgence when she has a history of eating disorders is in very poor taste. But that's a very delicate subject matter with a lot of nuance, so I'm not gonna get into that. Because we're here to talk about drawing wacky little characters. So let's start with the elephant in the room. Why is Beelzebub, a demon heavily associated with flies, designed as a fennec fox? And why is her ring themed around bees? And if you're also watching this bead paint instead of just having me on in the background, why am I carrying it over in my design? Well, first of all, I'm not trying to fix Vivzi's design and completely overhaul it with my ideas. I see what she was trying to do and I think it's clever, it just didn't go all the way in execution. Using bees instead of flies as an aesthetic is a nice play on the namesake of Beelzebub, and bee honey also ties in very well with the theme of gluttony and overindulgence in a more visually, aesthetically pleasing way. Because bees make and feed honey in abundance to their queen. Though a lot of people have pointed out that some of Vivzi's tweets actually hint at Beelzebub being a fly that disguised herself as a bee and that she's not an actual bee, I don't really see the point of it. I mean, maybe so people in hell would drink her Beelze juice thinking it's honey? Even though they're in hell anyway, and I honestly doubt anyone would care what they were ingesting as long as they knew it would get them high. So I just think it's a bit of an unnecessary detail. Either just commit to the bee bit, or go gross all the way and do a fly, you know? It's hell. I think of all the contexts you could possibly do, this is the perfect opportunity to do that. Okay, but why is she a fox though? Well, it's heavily implied that the hellhounds are the native species from the gluttony ring, since we see them in abundance here more than any other rings in hell. Similar to how succubi are mostly seen in lust, and shark demons are mostly found in greed. And because Beelzebub is the ruler of gluttony, I'm pretty sure Vivzi was trying to find a compromise between keeping Beelzebub a hellhound while also making her more insect-like. Do I think she succeeded? No. Do I think the design is completely unsalvageable? Also no. I personally really like the small details she added to the character, like the antenna ears and the lava lamp body. Like she's actually made of the stuff she's feeding her partygoers and spreading her sin to them. Though, I think it's worth mentioning that Kesha was also involved in the design process, and she also chose the design. So, while I think it came from a place of good intentions and obscure lore, it just didn't live up to expectations. So why am I drawing a dragon right now? Well, for my redesign, I really wanted B to have a crazy full demon design that's even more nonsensical than fox or insect, and I think a dragon would be the perfect vessel to house insect-like traits, like Flygon and Vibrava for instance, while still looking canid and relating to gluttony. Because gluttony isn't just about overconsumption, it's also about hoarding because in general, gluttony is obsessive love of material pleasure. And what creatures are known in biblical mythology for hoarding material pleasures? Dragons. And because I have Tears of the Kingdom on the brain. But to be fair, Tears of the Kingdom does use canine-like snouts in their dragon designs, which also has six legs. So, I don't know about you guys, 
but I think it's the perfect compromise in my opinion. Because then Beelzebub gets to transform into a sick dragon with a stinger tail and buzzing insect wings. And I have seen some people talking about how dragons are actually more closely related to greed. But... I mean, dragonfly. Come on, it's like, it's right there. Though I also wanted to design a civilian demon form that would make it easier for her to party with her hellhound citizens. When designing a character to a theme, a technique I like to use is to identify three elements that first come to mind when you think about the theme, and then looking for references to help solidify those elements. The elements I try to think of are shapes, colors, and patterns. Because I'm leaning into the bee theme for Beelzebub, the three elements I immediately think of for bees are stingers, fuzz, and black and yellow stripes. So now I just look up references for bee stingers, fuzz placement, and stripe pattern to get the design the way I want it. This also helps other people identify the theme you're going for. Because more often than not, the first things that come to mind when you think about the theme are also the first thing that come to other people's minds when they think about it. So use that to your advantage. I did initially want to make her more half insect than canid by making her lower half that of a bee's abdomen leading right to a stinger, a la the mantis lords from Hollow Knight, and I exaggerated the curvature of her lower legs to look more insect-like. Although I kept the curve of her legs, I ended up creating more of a fusion between fox and bee by getting rid of her paws and separating the abdomen and stinger from her main body to extend behind her, and it serendipitously ended up looking like a regular fennec fox tail. I also added barbs going up her arms and legs as an homage to her fly origins. You might have also noticed that I've modified her head shape and changed the silhouette of her head by adding tufts of fur to make her appear a bit less canine. I figure the fur tufts would also tie her civilian design better with her full demon form when she grows an entire mane. And for her head shape, I was really inspired by Raru and Minaru from Tears of the Kingdom, who are also half dragon creatures. Not half goat, like most people seem to believe. I also gave her more eyelashes, each with a blunted edge, to really draw attention to her face. I also decided not to include her hair because I think it just makes her silhouette a bit more sleek and the original hair distracts too much from her mane of Beelze juice, which I really want as the main focus. A tip for designing characters that I also mentioned in my spider Sona video is that the more detail you have on a certain part of a character, the more the eye will be drawn to that part. I kept her antenna ears because I genuinely thought it was clever and for her outfit, I decided to go with something resembling a playboy bunny leotard that would really showcase her chest fluff to create more of a bee-like silhouette. I also ended up opening them at the midriff to show off her lava lamp abdomen and added some tears to the bottoms to create inverse striping. I added more stripes to her face so that she reads more strongly as a bee, and the design was pretty much good to go. The pen I'm using for the line work and sketch is the Everything Brush by Ayoops, which you can find for free on her Kofi store. Also, this is unrelated, but I recently attended my first VidCon ever at Anaheim with some of my art YouTuber friends. I stayed at an Airbnb with Mally Malware, Ponder Sprocket, Fiona Polo, Streamline Workshop, Spy V, and Charlie, and I even got to hang out with creators like Harley TBS, Jay Aubrey, The Right Opinion, and Raymundo2112. I was also really excited to be able to see and meet some of my favorite creators in person, and it's an experience I'll never forget. I'm definitely going again next year. That was also my first time in America, and how I got the idea for this video in the first place. After discussing Beelzebub's design with Streamline Workshop, I randomly came up with the idea, but what if Beelzebub was just a straight up dragon? And here we are. Now, although I absolutely love the colors, you guys know that B literally has my favorite colors ever. The outfit itself just looks messy and sloppily put together. The shorts are really plain, the bra just completely disappears at the heart cutout, and the torn edges make it feel like it's 2010 and you just made your first edgy OC. It's really lazy. 
Plus, the design has a lot of clashing shapes, which creates dissonance in the overall appearance. What do I mean by this? Well, Beelzebub has a lot of sharp and pointy edges in her design. Every single part of her main body ends in a point, from her ears, the tips of her wings, the tufts of her fur, the ends of her hair, to the ripped edges of her outfit. Meanwhile, the lava lamp mane, tail, and torso have round circular edges, so it kind of looks like her mane and tail aren't really part of her body. Which may be intentional, I don't know, but generally you'd want to stick to a consistent shape philosophy to create a coherent design. But don't get me wrong, contrast is also a great thing to have in a design because it can be used to draw attention to a detail as well. So if you want to draw attention to a particular aspect of your character, just add more detail or create more contrast around it to help direct the eye. It just depends on the intention. But the thing with B's design, in my opinion, is that she has too much going on everywhere, so you don't even know where to look. And in part, I think it's because most of the colors blend too much into each other. So there's actually a lack of contrast to help any important detail stand out at a glance. The biggest offense to this is definitely her top and how it just blends into her lava lamp body. I think she looks much better in her alternate color scheme where her clothes are primarily black and her hair is more in line with the yellows because it helps everything else stand out much better. So because I want to draw more attention to the mane and tail, I will be reserving more of the contrasting colors like pink and blue to those areas, and keeping the main body primarily one tone, those tones being, of course, black and yellow. While the original Beelzebub design also darkened her limbs, I feel like the way Vivzi did it kind of made it look like Beel was wearing leg and arm warmers straight from Hot Topic, which slay, but not the look I'm aiming for. I want my design to feel more organic in its insect traits. So I went with a full blackout and then fade as it transitions to her fur. I think it makes her look like she has actual insect limbs or alternatively, like her arms and legs have been singed by the fires of hell. Both awesome interpretations I'd be happy with. But beyond that, I pretty much kept the same color scheme aside from adding some more pops of blue here and there to create more contrast and break up the yellow. I had a lot of fun painting in the lava lamp effects and I was especially pleased with how the tail looked. It looked like an actual lava lamp and I thought that was really cool. For the dragon form's eyes, I followed the way B's original monster form looked because I think it makes her look more insect-like and reminds me a lot of the white lady from Hollow Knight. And once again, I feel like I need to reiterate that character design is whatever you want it to be. It does get a bit trickier when you implement more rules and requirements to a design, like when you're following a theme or a prompt, and there's especially much stricter rules when you're designing for a company or any form of professional work. There's just different standards there, I guess. And for Vivzi, I feel like she should be held to higher levels of character design just because she is at a professional level at this point. And I get that she has her own animation studio, which lets her do whatever she wants. And honestly, that's totally cool. But also, criticism from the general audience is also more warranted just because you are at that level. But that's just my opinion. So as a tip for your personal character design development journey, sometimes it helps to use more recognizable elements to a design when you're following a theme. But other times, it's more rewarding and unique to use more obscure references or elements. It just depends on the context and what you want to achieve. And you know what? As long as you're not hurting anyone, you can do whatever you want with your art. Which is a message I want you guys to take away from this video when approaching Hell of a Boss as a series. Because it is created, once again, by independent artists on their personal platform and a culmination of its creator's interests. And honestly, there are way bigger issues in the show to criticize. For example, the poor writing and aimless story past the first season. Like, what is the show even about anymore? Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. Let me know what you think of my redesign in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. 
Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in the description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye! Thank you.